We are home. It is approximately 2 p.m. Emma has gone down for her nap. She's not sleeping, I don't think. But she's not screaming anymore, so, yeah. Small favors. And... The mail... Oh. The mail has arrived. So, we are gonna open this and I'm gonna hopefully be able to do this on camera. I, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll find out. We'll, we'll see if I can unbox this. I'm excited about what I got. <laughs> no pull tabs. Okay. Here we go. Tiny hearing and call. crinoline pattern. It's the walking cage crinoline that's going to go under aerial. Ish. Modified. Packing slip. This, which I'm super excited about. It's a pattern for a dress for Emma. Look at how cute that is. How precious is that? A little Civil War era dress. 18... 69 to 1876 this is appropriate for. I'm so excited! She's not gonna wear it, but I will enjoy making it. And... Walking skirt pattern because I wanted it. And I'm gonna try to modify this to be a little bit shorter, maybe? I don't know, we'll see. Um, but I would like to make one of these for me to wear, because, you know, who doesn't want to be a Victorian lady in a walking skirt? And then, hoop steel, and ends, and bone casing, steel casing. So, hooray! That's exciting. I can get started on things now. By getting started on things, I mean, I can finish the bodice and then start the hoop skirt. But I'm excited about this, so I think I'm going to pop open the pattern and have a gander at that and see if I need anything else. And if I do need anything else, what is it that I need to make sure that I have all of the supplies ready to start this part of the project when that part is done. So. I'm gonna go open the pattern and have a look, and I will check in later. So I just finished looking over the instructions for this. And I knew this, but I didn't know it. Like. The knowledge was there, but I didn't think about it. This is going to be more of an engineering project than a sewing project. It's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. There's one thing that's sewn, and it's the bag lining at the bottom, because I'm going to use an elastic waistband. I'm not sewing together this uh, laced, corseted hoopty um because i number one i don't have eyelets number two i don't have lacing number three elastic waistband allows me adjustability with no bulk so that's what we're gonna go with i am probably gonna construct this on daisy because that makes the most sense to me um there are a lot of Charts, charts, numbers, I'm not showing them too closely because this is a proprietal pattern, but like, yeah, engineering project. 
it's gonna be it's gonna be fine. And I'm gonna go make sure that I have the things that I need. The iron is dead. It's just getting colder. It's 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 set to cotton, which is the, the hottest setting. <clears throat> and steam. And what's the temperature read on it? Seventy-one degrees. I'm gonna go cut some steel. All right. So last check-in before bed. I have spent the last I don't even know how long cutting hoop steel using this fun tool. Uh, that was an adventure, let me tell you. I'm glad I moved to the living room because it would have definitely taken something out here. Uh, there's a lot of technology in this room. My odds of hitting a computer by cutting this at, at the table were way higher than my odds of hitting the television sitting on the floor. Um, it's mounted to the wall. Um, but yeah, uh, that was an adventure. It was fun. Uh, I have looked at the pattern. I started laying out the bands on the dress for me. You see Daisy's got her little ace band on. <laughs> And I pinned, I mean, I, I don't, I'm using an elastic waistband so that this is adjustable and I can use it maybe not in a corset or in, you know, a different corset than the one that I have. And I also made it a little bit smaller than 35 inches because ideally my waist will go down. And it's a lot easier to like cut a little bit out of the elastic than it is to adjust something that is a waist cincher. And I don't have eyelids, so I have pin oh. a string here. I'm supposed to start from the bottom, but my iron won't turn on, so that's the thing that needs to be fixed. But um, I realize that the walking cage crinoline is only 33 inches long, and I feel like that's really short. So, uh, the regular cage crinoline pattern is 36 inches long, so I think I'm just going to add 3 inches to all of these and play with the placement of the hoops and make sure I like it. Um, yeah, so that's the plan for tomorrow, because it's 10 to 12 and I need to go to bed because Tiny Human is going to be in our room ready to read another chapter of Winnie the Pooh and make cinnamon rolls for breakfast at 7. So, I'm going to bed. This is where we are. I got the scary part done, that that, that cutting the hoops, the, the steel was one of the things that was on my list is th fun new things to do for this project that I am excited about and also terrified of. So, that's done. Next step, Moving on to this, I do have extra of the um, uh, Grow Grain ribbon. This ribbon actually came off of some pillows that I ordered. They they tied them up in a nice little bow in each of these ribbons. And I was like, I'll use that for something. Sure enough, I needed five yards of Grow Grain ribbon, and I have six. So we're, we're, we're golden. So I'm going to do that and or I'll do that tomorrow. I will check in when I make progress tomorrow, which probably won't be until nap time. I'm going to go adjust these wires because they're now falling off the table. Hello. It is Saturday. Um, we just finished playing a game with our friends. We wrapped up a round of Arabian Nights that we started like three, in weeks, ago? three weeks ago or something like that. 
Um, that game is long, but I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Zach and I played co-op. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I have been working on the hoop skirt pattern. Um, this afternoon I did literally nothing in here. We cleaned, uh, which was necessary because there was a Christmas bomb that went off in our living room and then we had to reorganize all the books in our child's bookshelves because... She has a lot of books. She's our child. She's our child and she has the same problem her mom and dad do. We have not enough bookshelves. It's never there's too many books. There's always too few bookshelves. Let's be clear. Yes, that, that is always the problem. So while we were playing, I was working on tracing out the pattern pieces. Um, if you've been around since the beginning, since video one, you'll recognize this white gauzy fabric as the fabric that I used to line the Christmas dress. Um, I am using it as the bag lining for the hoop skirt because there's a bag, the bag lining. Um, Basically, there's fabric around the bottom three hoops because that's where you have the greatest likelihood of sticking your foot through the hoop skirt and getting stuck. So if you just have fabric there instead of uh, str like straps, you're, you're not going to get stuck. Um, so that is the, the plan. I am having to piece... Uh, this last section here because uh, the fabric wasn't I had cut into it weird um, so I need to fix that but I have two of the three panels done and I need to sew them together uh, and then I am going to cut out the boning channels and I think what I've decided uh, I don't remember if I talked about this before I'm adding three inches to the length of the straps so I'm just gonna move everything down like an inch or so. Like I'm gonna play with the placement on there. I'm gonna use the placement that they have marked and then I'll play with it and see what I like. Um, but I really need to get this hoop skirt together because having these random gangly metal bits on the table is creating kind of a hazard because I went to use, um, this is my backup iron. I went to use the backup iron to iron this fabric because um, we haven't bought another iron yet. Um, and I have two of the bones are now on the floor under my sewing machine. So <laughs> it's dangerous out there. Be careful. Um, so yeah, that is what I'm going to try to work on and get done before bed um, is at least assemble the bag lining um, so that Wow, it's raining. Mm -hmm. um, so that tomorrow I can put the hoop skirt together the rest of the way because it needs to be put together the rest of the way so that it's no longer a safety hazard since I'm going to be in here next week teaching. Um, so yeah, that is the plan. I will check in before I go to bed and let you know how far I got. Alright, so it is 10 after midnight. I'm going to bed because I'm about to fall over. I have successfully pieced the rogue. Uh, yeah, you can see it's pieced there. I did muck up and the two pieces, like the seam allowance is on the outside on this, this little square, but I'll just zigzag over the top of that. It's not a big deal. Um, and I have sewn all of them together into a big strip and I'm pinning the top wrong sides together. Uh, I am done for the evening so the first task of the morning is to sew this big massive long straight seam. It's um, 112 inches. Yeah, I think it's 112 inches. And then I need to stitch the channels for the steel into them. Um, there will be three hoops in the bag here. Um, and you can't see the lines that I've marked for stitching because 
They're on the inside of the fabric. Can you see them on this side? Kind of. A little bit. Um, but I'm going to stitch on those dotted lines. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six really long seams to sew tomorrow. Um, and then I need to attach the ends of this, insert the steel, attach the ribbons to the right location. Yeah. And then I can actually start mucking about with the steel. It'll be fun. Uh, yeah. We'll see what happens, but it'll probably be a nap time activity. And I still need to shop for a new iron. Hooray! The, the nice thing is the backup iron works for this, and because I'm not super worried about it, because again, it's an undergarment. Um, and I can't iron the velvet bodice because I don't know if I've addressed this or not, but you shouldn't iron velvet because all the fluffiness goes away when you crush it with the weight of the iron and the heat. It just, it collapses on itself. Um, so, I'm going to bed. <sighs> I'll check in tomorrow. All right, so the bag that goes around the bottom that keeps me from stepping through it and getting stuck is assembled and the channels are sewn in and the strap depths that are going to hold it to the elastic waistband are sewn on and marked uh, and now I'm going to insert the three terrifying steel bones in the bottom eight seven and six hoops eight seven and six Hoops 8 and 7 are the same size, they're just sitting at the bottom to help give it the bottom of the skirt, which in theory has the most weight uh, structure. Uh, and then hoop 6 is at the top of the bag. Uh, <clears throat> and then I'm going to pin it to the dress form and see what happens. I haven't figured out how I'm finishing the bones. It just says... Uh, Lap the ends two inches and fasten slash clamp in place with tape, wire, cable ties, or other means. <laughs> I have enough space in here to use cable ties. I don't know if that's going to work in the bone casing, but I don't know. I, I, I don't remember that part of the directions, so I think I might steal some cable ties from Zach and use those because... And then go over the sharp ends with electrical tape is probably a good plan. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And hopefully I don't poke my eye out. <laughs> it's going to be fine, right? Right. We'll find out. Quick note as a thank you to past me. Um, when I was cutting the bones, I, I don't even know. Okay, here we go. I numbered them, so that's number seven. Uh, thank you to pass me for numbering them because these, I had them laid out in an order and they have fallen about all over everywhere in a very hazardous fashion. And I, they are no longer any in any kind of organized, sensical order. So thank you to pass me for numbering them in Sharpie so that I would know which one goes where. All right, now we're gonna try to put the bottom three in and I'm gonna pin it to Daisy and then move forward with the other hoops. All right, so Emma is stirring. She is working on waking up. Sorry, I was checking. <laughs> Tiny human cam. Yeah, she's working on waking up. So I am uh, gonna walk you through real quick what I'm doing. I'm taking the bone and I'm using some electrical tape to wrap around the end of each bone. Uh, because this is really sharp <laughs> uh, and it's wanting to poke a hole in the fabric and get snagged. Uh, so I'm wrapping it around the end on each end and I'm feeding it through the tube. I have this top one here left to do for bone six um, and then I am using electrical tape to overlap this by two inches inside of the thing and then I am securing it with a zip tie. We'll, we'll, I'm gonna try to get this last one done before 
Emma wakes up officially and comes downstairs because the wire is currently all over the floor. And again, the ends of this are sharp. It's gonna be great. We have some success with the first three hoops. Now I need to cut the uh, boning channels so that I can encase the bones in boning channels so that they are attachable to that and not a hazard any longer. So that's that, that, that's where we are. Cool. Alright, we had to move into the living room, the newly untreed living room, where there's miraculously more space. Um, because there's more space in here. Um, and this is what we have. We have achieved hoop skirtness. I just uh, was watching some YouTube videos and I hand sewed down the back and I hand sewed, because there's really no way to put this through the sewing machine once I hand sewed these closed, because once the bones go in you really like, like I can probably machine sew this closed without danger, but these boning channels were not going to get sewed closed. <laughs> it just wasn't, wasn't happening. Um, so now I am going to take that pile right there of skirts and put it on the dress form and just see how it lays because I like the shape. I think the straps do some weirdness, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that to hold the, the skirt into the like, there should be more fullness towards the back. I'm not sure if that's what it is. I'm not sure if I screwed something up. I think I might have. I don't know. But overall, I think like no one's going to see the straps. And I don't think it's affecting the shape. We'll find out when we put the skirt over it. So I will check back in once I wrestle some skirts on top of Daisy. okay I'm gonna compare it to the source image but I think it's gonna be floofier than the source image just because it's an actual 1850s hoop skirt pattern <laughs> as opposed to like a commercial hoop skirt pattern or a hoop skirt that like you would wear as a like Barbie I guess it it's not Barbie it's semi-historical so yeah, I am super happy with this. I think it looks really nice. Um, there's some wrinkling that's happening. Okay. So, hold that up. Let's go around front. I think it works. This lighting makes it look... The, the contrasting colors in this lighting is not great, but, you know. This is a living room lighting. Yeah, this is a living room. Uh, but I think it looks good. I'm just going to go ahead and sew the straps down, and it's fine. It'll be fine. Okay, so... I wanted to uh, come on and talk about why I'm wearing this. Um, as you can see, Daisy, her, her waist, for the purposes of what I've been needing, is at the 35 inch mark, because that's where I am-ish corseted. Uh, that number has gone down because this is increasingly out, getting smaller. Um, because I'm just getting more used to wearing the corset and I need it tighter to have the same level of support. Um, it's called seasoning your corset. 
I'm not moving my organs. I'm fine. Um, but my, my hips, because I'm squishy, are bigger than, than Daisy's. And so what was happening was the elastic was sliding down off of her. And I wanted to make sure that wasn't going to happen on me uh, and see if I needed to make the elastic smaller. And it does look like I do need to make the elastic smaller. Uh, because the weight of the steel hoops is stretching the elastic. Um, but also, uh, two things about hoop skirts <laughs> that I know just from doing a lot of this. Number one, southern women specifically, and the, the American southern women, when they were wearing these, used them as air conditioning. So in the summer, they would stand in the shade in their drawers, because drawers became a thing, because there were only so many layers under this, um, they would stand in the shade and generate their own breeze. <laughs> so, personal, portable, outdoor air conditioner. Um, the other thing that I know about these is, uh, on the flip side, they made you a human chimney. <laughs> because you're wearing all this flammable fabric and there's a giant air pocket underneath you so you get too close to fire you're done for so uh interesting fashion history tidbits that i have stored away in my brain and that i will think about when i wear this and if you don't think i'm gonna go to a con and use the personal air conditioner, you are sadly mistaken. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think that's it. I'm gonna make this elastic waistband smaller before I attach any of the support bands to it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and hand sew down all of the support bands. Because, uh, yeah, this isn't going in the sewing machine. Yeah, there we go. Less movement. Good. However, we got some wonkiness. Pokes out here. Sucks in there. Not, not ideal. We'll adjust it. It's fine. is uh, much, much later. Uh, I have finished the hoop skirt. I have worn it, not, I have not worn it out because where are we going? Um, but I've, you know, worn it to, to do fittings and stuff of the aerial costume. And I, I wanted to, to share two things as like a wrap up. Uh, one is as much as I kept saying this, this isn't going back in the sewing machine. This isn't going back in the sewing machine. It did, because I machine sewed the bands to the elastic, because I needed to use the zigzag stitch. The second thing is we're, we're editing the video right now, and I watched myself unbox the, the hoop steel and the casing. And I was like, wait a minute. I went to all that trouble to figure out how to finish the ends and used all that electrical tape. That's what these are for. I unboxed it and promptly forgot that these existed at all. However, the nice thing is that I can use the leftover steel and casing and these things for when I make my 1880s bustle, lobster tail bustle. So that's what I will be doing for that. Uh, so thanks for following along with this uh, crazy adventure so far. Um, we still have the making of the bodice to come, as well as painting the overskirt and styling the wig and. I need to make stencils to paint. Yeah, Zach has to make stencils for us to paint and possibly 
another one day make where I attempt to make a uh, petticoat to go over the hoop skirt for just general purposes but that involves a trip to the thrift store so that will have to wait until after I get my second dose of the COVID vaccine because, yeah, so that'll be a spring break activity when Emma's at school and I am home. So, uh, <laughs> learn my lesson there. Don't do a 24-hour challenge when you have a tiny human. Uh, so thanks for following along. Uh, stay tuned if there are things that you want to see. Uh, please let me know down in the comments below uh, if you have any questions or um, if you... Uh, have any commentary on how I could have done this better because I've never done this before and engineering is not what I have a background in. <laughs> um, but um, if you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe um, and give us a like and a comment. It really helps us out and we will see you next week. Have a good week guys!